like OpenBB, I love it. Uh, <laughs> I've used the Bloomberg terminal before. I've been a trader and it costs $25,000 a year to use this and get this investment research. And you make all that free for everyone. Uh, <laughs> this is incredible. So I really want to hear your story, how you got started, your background and how we got here today. Yeah. That sounds great. Thank you so much for the kind words. And yeah, please, let's have like, you know, uh, a good conversation. You can ask questions and I'll be uh, happy to reply. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. Absolutely. And I, I already started recording this, actually. So, you know, we can we can kick it off if you'd like to talk a little bit about your background and then the early days of hoping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my background. Um, so first of all, like I'm my parents are Portuguese. I was born in Switzerland. That's why, like, I have a French name. When I was young, like eight years old, I went back to Portugal. Uh, my parents basically moved to Switzerland for better, like, uh, uh, financial conditions. And then they moved back to Portugal because, like, pretty much all my family was there. I ended up doing a bachelor in electrical and computer engineering. And then I did um, a exchange program at U Delft because I wanted to try, you know, to uh, go to uh, another university. So I picked like the best one that uh, my university had relationships with. And I really enjoyed that experience, like outside with like an uh, English, uh, English speaking country. My English was was very poor at the time. And so when I came back, you know, with the uh, exchange program over, I was like, you know, I don't want to finish my master's here. I want to do it in a better university. And I really liked London as a city because I felt like it was like beautiful. And I saw this university like Imperial College London, which was like one of the best in the world. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to try to do my program there and like push further. And yeah, I, w I went there. I did the, uh, a master in control systems at, at, at Imperial and then. I stayed there doing software engineer, learning Python and machine learning on my spare time. And yeah, that's a bit my background. So like nothing, nothing related with finance, really, um, at least at the beginning. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for sharing this. And yeah, nothing related to that point, although you lived and you know, studied in hubs of investments and money. And so yeah. how did you get your first, uh, did you take your first steps in uh, finance and in investment and yeah. how the project start? Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, I was really excited about the field of machine learning and AI. And so soon I realized that I need to learn Python to get into this field. So I went really in into Python. So I became like studying it, doing open source projects and sharing my journey on LinkedIn. And one day I got this message from uh, a previous uh, mathematics teacher of my university in Portugal. And he was like, oh, I see that you, you've you been like doing a lot of cool stuff in Python. I'm working on my, my PhD thesis, which is around the data science uh, uh, in modeling and forecasting of financial time series. And uh, do you want to help me uh, uh, write the code behind this? Because I'm not a code person. And I was like, this is amazing. This is like literally what, what I need. I need to have like a, a, a more like a, a project that is more complicated, but uh, that uh, I, there's like an objective behind the scene. So I said, yeah, like let, let's, let, let's let's do this. And at the time, like, you know, I read, read books like Rich Dad Poor Dad. So you know that the, the only true way to build like, you know, generational wealth is through investing. And I already, already had like, a, you know, a couple of years of working experience. So I was like, you know, this is a good time for me to start learning about finance. And that's kind of where the old finance thing started. First from these, these uh, uh, writing the code behind the PhD thesis project. And then uh, to um, doing investment research on my own, basically using my own uh, capital to invest. Amazing, amazing. And I'm, I'm curious what the, those first days using your own capital looked like. And uh, it, I know a lot of stories of people, you know, who were like in between academia and industry and became professional mm -hmm. entrepreneurs in finance. Uh, and this yeah. is one of those stories. So you just started trading on your own and then came to face a problem yeah. with access to information. What did it look like? Yeah. Yeah, man, gonna, gonna be honest, coming from VS Code in engineering, which for me is like one of the best tools ever in terms of like efficiency and how you can optimize your workflows and save like so many hours. I, investment was horrible. <laughs> like I I started spending just uh, evenings first, but that was because I didn't know a lot. But as soon as I started understanding everything that moved the markets, you know, like sentiment analysis, like Reddit, like Twitter, uh, you know, uh, insider trading, like uh, options, fundamental analysis, I started going from spending evenings to spending full weekends. And the thing I was spending time on is things that like, even now in the terms of when you think about AI and stuff, all of that could be automated. Most of that was actually data retrieval. I was, I had like always a lot of like dashboards open. I would take a screenshot, put it into a document, write down something about it. 
the taking a screenshot of that of that uh, that ticker and putting on the document from the different dashboards that process was always the same the only thing that i done was go in there refresh the page choose a different ticker refresh the page and it's just like why do you know what i mean like why 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 can't i automate that the only like insights the only extra part is what i'm adding on top of that information yet i still lose 80 percent of my time doing all the manual work and then i look for for solutions that allowed for this and there wasn't like really nothing there was nothing that allowed you to automate like your investment research as much as you wanted and and furthermore as i was interested on on machine learning and ai i wanted to really have access to the data and play with it. And that was a, 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 also another nightmare because I either had to find the perfect data provider that had all the data are needed, or there wasn't anything else. I had to, you know, I had to read the documentation of data provider X and then read of the another one Y, and then they had like some cross correlated data. And then I would be like, you know, okay, which one, which one do I use now? And then if I want to look at a different asset class, the way to interact with the API is completely different. And that was really, really frustrating from a standpoint of view of like having an engineering first approach. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where the like the old pain point started. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And you just described, I mean, there's this pipeline, right? To retrieve the data, put it in one place, to analyze it and then drive insights and get the signals you care about, uh, in, yeah. you know, for your job. And so now when you faced this super real problem um, that everyone else faces and OpenBB solves, uh, what was it like to just announce to the world, hey, like there's this problem and, you know, let's start solving it and let's start an open source project about it. Yeah. So I'm going to be honest. I didn't think that much into it because of, yeah, I never thought about being in the position I am today. And that's the truth. I never like really thought that I'll be like behind the business. I'm a builder. Like I, I just like to code. I like to code. I like to solve like problems. Uh, like, I don't know, one of the first as soon as I learned coding uh, in in school, like I think the 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 next like on Christmas or something, I did like a, a recipe program for my mom to basically manage the recipes. And like I like to use coding to help me find solutions to problems. And in this case, was it was literally that I didn't really think about you know oh I'm gonna open source these and then gonna get some funding. Not at all. Like I I started basic actually. That is interesting because I started writing down what my pain points were and I started to understand that a lot of people had the pain points I had as well. And the reason I understood that is because I used Reddit to learn about investing. And when I read like these massive Reddit posts on due diligence on Tesla, the, the mo most of the things I could see is like the first screenshots from multiple data sources. And then I was thinking like these, these, these posts is outdated next week. And if you look at different tickers, the person has to spend the exact same hours. There isn't anything to me. So I started writing down uh, notes in terms of what my investment research was was like. And then I had like a notes and then I, I looked for a GitHub uh, for an open source project that I could build on top and there wasn't anything. So I just had like notes on a notebook for, for like most of the time while I was improving my knowledge in finance. And then this was during COVID, during Christmas and my flight got canceled to visit my parents in, in Switzerland. So I had like a full week on my hands in London that like, you know, I was not foreseeing. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, you know, I know, I know Python, I'm, I'm pretty efficient at Python. I'm gonna build like solution that solved this problem to me. And so I started like building it on that first week and I got so excited about it. I kept building on it like for the next two months and I had a full-time job. And so it would, it was really hectic at the time. Uh, I even remember like, you know, my girlfriend at the time, my wife, uh, that she was like, uh, kind of sad in a, in a way that we didn't do anything because I was just so ha like happy about what I was building and so excited about seeing it coming together. And then um, and then one day I did the same as I did my past open source project, which is I, I just posted it on LinkedIn. The thing is, I learned so much from people on Reddit that we started watching a movie and I said like, you know, I'm going to put this on open source and now I'm going to chill a bit. We started watching a movie and then I was like, oh, I want to post it also on 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 uh, on Reddit because I learned from these people and they, they might find this interesting. And this was like on a random Thursday evening. I didn't even think much about it, you know, and I and I put it on Reddit and then we went viral. We went viral on, on Reddit uh, and then someone mentioned, put it on Acre News, we went viral on Acre News and then Vice Magazine did a, a post about this like the next day or something like that. And so none of this was like planned, you know, it was like, all very like natural and I didn't even the code you can see the first commits like that code was not prepared to scale at all like like literally at all even like the pip install you know that you are used to with the requirements of the, the txt it didn't even have all the packets because like I didn't fully test it I was like you know this is for me I'm going to improve it over time but there's not like a, a, a high bar because it's only for me right now and 
it turns out that like more people were in the same situation that I was and they were actually like keen on not just you know saying oh this is cool I'm on the same boat as you but I want to you know add a pull request I want to create like a, a feature request I want to join a group where we, we can steer the direction of the project and uh, yeah so that's how I kind of came into this old like you know OSS ecosystem first um yeah I love it. That's such a phenomenal story. Thank you. Thank you for saying. Wow. Uh, and how did those first months, then first weeks and months, look like once you got all this traction, all these people looking to contribute and build with you? Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I loved it. I loved it. Like it was, it was so cool. It was very hectic in terms of like the amount of hours that I had to spend uh, with a full like nine to five job, um, like yeah. until late night. But it was so much fun. Like. We started like a, a Discord group where we were like talking and we were having fun. We were building features like someone would come in after like an evening and build like a super cool features. Someone came in. I remember this one is one of the, the ones that I remember first because he was someone that I've, I've never spoken up to that point. And one day I wake up and this person added the pull request to the full Forex menu. And for me, that was really impactful because First, it was like a full asset class that we didn't have, and I never traded. I never traded Forex. So it was like a full new different asset class that I never traded. And it was someone that wasn't even on Discord. And this person just liked the, the tool, was interested to using it for, for his equity research, but he was also looking into Forex. So he felt like, you know, I want both of these uh, uh, worlds in, in one place. And I mean, that's, I think, when I was like, you know, this, this can be huge. You know, what we are building is actually like, can be a, a generational product, you know? Um, yeah, that was like, and we kept on, on shipping, we kept on building, the group kept on uh, on increasing, there was like a lot of PRs, and most of the team we have today actually came from those times, which is like super exciting. That is that is incredible, wow. <laughs> and like at that point, I reckon you, once you understood, okay, what we have here is, you know, magical, like, uh, how did you approach then the motions of, okay, there should be a company behind it, we should like... Yeah. Yeah, grow the organization. Yeah. yeah um. So. <laughs> yeah. How do I how do I put this? We didn't really think about that. Um. Mm -hmm. I was just I was just building a I was just building a product that I found that I needed for my investment research. I never expected that there would be an interest to build a company around it. Uh, but that's also yeah. because I think I yeah. was a bit like naive. I would say that I wasn't really into the the whole like, you know, founders, like CEO enterprise, like world. And so for me, it was like, you know, I, I'm just building this solution. And then I, I started realizing the potential when I started like getting approached by people. And like, actually we started looking into, I remember the first time it was probably before, one, one month before uh, JJ from SS Capital reached to us that I, I, um, I shared a link to one of the main ma maintainers, James, uh, about a, Bound, uh, what was it? It was like a program that they give you 250k to work on a project, and uh, I said it. I was like, you know, this, this this would be cool, uh, so that you know we could have a bit more like, like time to work on this. So I didn't have like my you know nine to five job, and I could just dedicate my life yeah, to this. Plan, and then plan. yeah, you were still working a full time job. I was yeah, I was I was I was still I didn't even think about because I didn't know that there was like a a commercial opportunity around around the project. Um, and then we started talking with uh, OSS Capital, J Joseph Jax. And then I realized that, you know, actually like the amount of eyeballs and traction that we have is not something normal, you know? It's something that you have when like, it's almost in a way like like people are looking for your project because they they need something like that. It's not just social media like following because, you know, uh, you know, they find fun or something. No, this is like out of need and developers contributing. is actually spending their own personal time to help build this product is actually a big thing. It's not just, you know, it's not just a, a, you know, a thumbs up and thumbs down. It's spending their own time to learn the, the infrastructure of the code to build it because they believe in what he's doing and it solves a problem for them too. And that's when I started realizing that, okay, this, this, can, this can be huge. And, and when, you know, OSS uh, Capital uh, talked with us about uh, raising a round to, to build the company, I was like, so you're telling me that I get to do the same I do today, but I don't have a, a nine to five job and I get to put all the time and I can hire the people that already work with it on a spare time. I was like, where do I sign? Do you know what I mean? Exactly. That's that's like a dream story, you know, can't, can't <laughs> get any better if you were to make a novel about it. 
that's, that's amazing. And at that point, uh, probably your role, your job, your everyday life, it, it became, you know, it changed, right? Or did it? How how did you navigate this? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So when when we raised, um, quite a few things changed. Um, so. One, well, one of the things, first of all, I had like a, a three three month notice period because uh, that's like the, the rules in, in Europe. So we, for the next three months, it was like, I was kind of in this situation where it's like, is this actually going to happen? Is this like real? You know, like it just felt like surreal that we were getting funding and I would go from being a sensor fusion engineer to actually like, you know, leading a company. But like as, as the time went by, I started like getting more motivated and, and uh, uh, started talking with the people that were uh, uh, building the um, the project already on open source capacity. I started talking with them about like, you know, we're building actually a company around this. We're going to get uh, like a designer. We're going to have uh, people that are more focused on the product. We're going to have like a financial department and things like that. And it started getting like more material. And um, it almost felt like, the nine to five time that I was spending on uh, uh, on uh, working for another company, he started. Uh, uh, I started spending it in terms of like creating a company, and my spare time was still on on building. But like the nine to five became of okay, how are we gonna make a company? And also, I've never at that point read books like you know, I don't know the I Growth Handbook from from Elad Gill or 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 uh, uh, Naval Ravikant's books and like books that help you be better like CEO or even not to manage a company. So I had a lot of catch up to do. So. I've been doing that for you know the past like now almost two years because I was so like uh, not into this world before that I had a lot to catch up on if I wanted to do a good job uh, at leading a company and uh, yeah that time was a lot about like learning uh, you know talking with people that knew about this and so that I could learn from their experiences and uh, yeah it was a lot of fun though. Absolutely, that's that's great, and and thanks for sharing this. And you know, people can expect when they get started that they need to invest all this time uh, to bring themselves to a position to be able to uh, to manage uh, and to work with uh, their their group of people. That's uh, that's incredible. And now I'm curious at that point, and you know, all the way to today as well, the commercial you know interest for this, the pull from investment professionals and the monetization path, like you know. The, the opportunity space is there all along, you knew it. Uh, at what moment did you start focusing or not in having those conversations and arriving at what could be like a package or the pro solution? Uh, just curious to what extent in product development and in your day-to-day -day, that became a part versus just building with a community as you always did. Um, so I, I'd say probably recently we started talking about more seriously about monetization. Um, up until then, it's been a lot about, and this is, by the way, this is one of the things that I really liked about the Joseph Jacks from OSS Capital and all, all of our angels. Everyone was aligned on the vision. There was, there's not one investor that we have that like called us and said like, you know, you need to start generating revenue by, by you know, the next three months. Because otherwise I, I just, it just wouldn't make sense. Like we're trying to build like a multi-billion dollar company. And so we try to do every step that would make us closer to, to achieve that goal. And starting to generate revenue early on is, ju is just a distraction for what we're, the dimension of what we're trying to build, generating revenue like early on, would just kill the, the community and not, and not make sense from a perspective of like, like, you know, where we want to be. So that's like what we focus on. And I think we've been on that path for now, like almost, yeah, one, one year and a half where we've been be like building the product. We learned like now a sort of like three products, uh, each for the like use case, but we're really trying to build like an ecosystem where they can interact like very well together for, for investment research. And now that, you know, we've been like almost like, um, yeah, one, one year and a half into this, we're starting to think about, okay, now, now we need to to start thinking about like uh, the commercial journey. Uh, this product that we're thinking about is the OpenVB Terminal Pro, and what what the commercial journey would look like. What uh, what type of monetization do we expect? And the reason why we monetizing is just not for the sake of monetization. It's because that allows us to reinvest that capital into building a better open source product. And that's why the the OpenVB Terminal Pro is actually going to be uh, based off the open source OpenVB SDK, which means that you know the community will get pretty much all of the advantage of the, the, the core of the open source platform and all the data access endpoints. It's just that the, the pro solution is going to be like, let's say a more professional take for, for, for small to, to medium enterprise with like more collaborative features, like, you know, API keys management, uh, like more security. And that those are kind of like, you know, more professional features, but you can still leverage 
pretty much everything the same on the terminal application that we have available today. That's 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 perfect. And basically, you know, <laughs> to the business, uh, the organization being more sustainable, to more investment into the community uh, and improving yep. the product. And of course, those professionals that have those extra needs, they will get service too. They will get exactly yep. what they need. And so it makes sense for everyone. And it must be a great period uh, to kick everything uh, in this direction. And of course, the OpenBB terminal, it's free to use. The SDK is available for everyone. And then recently you released the OpenBB bot, right? Where on yep. Discord, I can get alerts, I can get investment analysis, research, everything I need. So tell yeah. us about this. And this is free as well. Yeah, so um, so that one is actually a, a kind of a, a, was a very early on strategic take that we don't want just to build like an application. We actually want to build like the infrastructure for investment research. And for that, we need to build an ecosystem. And so, because uh, this all started, I think, early on because um, the community was talking about integrating like a shop on the, on the terminal. And we started thinking about, I actually started to think about how I interacted with my, my colleagues and friends about my investment. And like, we were, would be like chatting on uh, uh, WhatsApp or, or Discord or Telegram about investing. And I was thinking, okay, let's say that I had a shot on the terminal. Like if, we're, if me and my friends have a group on, on Telegram, why would we all leave to keep the discussion on an application? I get that you would want that as a company behind the application because you want those users on, on, on your terminal for some metrics that you are tracking. But from a user perspective, it just doesn't make sense. I just want the data to come to me. Plus, when you're on your phone, it means that you are outside your house and you can, you know, track track that data. You can pull data that, you know, interacts with the platform. So for us, the OpenBB bot as is the strategic thing is to have the OpenBB bot to be like a, a, an extension of what the OpenBB terminal is capable of. And because the bot is agnostic to the, the, the UI, because it relies on like this common interface, you, we can deploy to, you know, on Telegram, uh, on uh, uh, Discord, on Slack and any other chatting, chatting platform. And so, yeah, the bot is fully free for individuals. There's a, uh, just a paid tier if you want to host it on your server. And that's more because you may want to do like auto posting. So every time it, it auto posts like the SP500 or, you know, you may want to create like, a, we call it a billboard feature where when the shards is displayed across the entire channel for users, you can control what's the top banner say. So you can say, you know, there's going to be a webinar next week, like attend here. And so you can use that to, you know, uh, increase your, um, you know, uh, exposure. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm really excited about about the bot uh, personally because I, I use it a lot when I'm outside the house to look at tickers, uh, to track a, a watch list of tickers that I'm interested in. Like the banks, I, I am tracking currently the banks. And this is like yesterday I was looking and they were like all like minus 10%. Uh, I was like, you know, them. <laughs> um, curious to ask you from... Um... You know, maintainer perspective and with the community sort of like opening PRs and extending the product in all sorts of ways. Uh, have you ever uh, faced a scenario where maybe it wasn't aligned with a roadmap to merge a specific uh, request or it, th this hasn't been a problem or expect to be? And how do you manage that process, give clarity to the community where we're working towards, where not? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's tough sometimes because you know, you only have so much resources. And uh, uh, I think that a lot of like open source, like contributors sometimes feel like entitled to have their, their PR merge because they worked on it. And I get that. I honestly, I, I get that. So one of the, the rules that that I was very clear within OpenBB is not, for instance, I don't like the tracking of uh, the pull request from creation to merge because I don't think I, sometimes that doesn't reflect the strategy of the company. So that's a wrong metric to track. What I do like to track is the, the, the PR opening and the comment from the OpenBB team. And that comment could be anything. That comment could be from saying, we are reviewing this right now and we're going to integrate it like as soon as it's ready. Or it could be, this doesn't align with our roadmap currently. We don't have the resources to work on this, but we will look into this in the next one, two months. Sorry for the delay, you know? But that's really important. Is is more important the transparency that you have with the community than actually the decision, because then they when they understand and and because we are really like transparent, or at least I'd like to think that that's how the community perceives us. Um, we can say what we are working on right now, and this is why your PR won't come in right now. That's that's excellent. Thank you so much for sharing this insight, and uh, yeah, that people can take note uh, of this is a highlight. Uh, <laughs> has there been, you know, I mean. 
the the superpowers that you enjoy as an open source project uh, with this community. Tell us about some of the ways that uh, maybe uh, you know you're looking to run new experiments in the future, uh, just because you're you're open source. And then what are some of the things we might expect? I don't know if you'd like to share uh, public some things coming up. And I'm curious personally, you know, at what point, if ever, I would be able to actually hook everything up to uh, you know software that trades and uh, whether any of this is within scope there we go yeah um so yeah in terms of like the the the, the open source uh, uh community um yeah my experience is, is is great like is great there's no like i think it would be really hard if i was to managing a company that is closed source now because i'm just so used to getting feedback on a, a trading fast and sometimes the innovation comes from the community but most of the times it comes from our engineers outside their working hours. So the best features that we've been releasing, they come from someone working on them on the weekend and then coming on the Monday and having a proof of concept to show to others. And for instance, we last week we launched the interactive charts and the interactive tables. The interactive charts was someone from the, the our team that they didn't find like a, a proper library and they were they didn't like the matplotlib because it was like a static output. And so they and they didn't find a solution for for a, a, a Python uh, like visualization tool that's like suited what we were looking for, and so they built an, an open source library on on the weekend. They started building, and we're gonna uh, release it like uh, I think still this month. Uh, make make it like really open source. It, it is already, but we we're still cleaning up the code a bit. Um, and so they made that, and then this was only for sharding. And then uh, our our front end person saw that, and he was like, oh, we can I can change the code in React to make this for tables, and they they did that. And then the LLM like proof of concept that I shared like on Twitter a few a few weeks ago, that was one of our product managers on the weekend doing some experiments. And then we have like Derek, which is someone from the community that's been uh, using Auto GPT on OpenBB. So like, there's no way I feel like you can do that without having an open source project, or at least I've not seen that level of uh, like innovation happening outside of open source like ever. And that's just like it's just really hard to to compete that, and it's just like. People really believe in what what they are doing, and they see like the tool. Another cool one that we we just talked today on the All Lens meeting is the an Excel plugin. One of our engineers, like uh, um, he used to work in banking for like four 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 years, and so he understands the 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 need for for Excel. So he he experimented on a weekend, and Monday he you know he sends a video to everyone, and he has like an Excel plugin that we retrieves data from the SDK on Excel like seamlessly. And I'm like, you know, this is so cool. Like it, it, the innovation kind of you know, comes a bit from, from internal, but also external, like running like side projects that then end up going into the roadmap. And we need to understand, you know, how to actually, you know, create that like, launch, like what's, what's a good, like quality level to push these, these out. Um, but yeah, in terms of, you mentioned like uh, even trading execution. So one of the hard parts that I think about open source then is that, is that as good, as much as this is a good thing of innovation, sometimes it's like too much and, Everyone wants to stretch you in their own way because they perceive the software in, in a certain way and they want to push it to a certain way. So being able to trade on the terminal has been something that uh, a lot of people have been asking since uh, they, they want. But I feel like as much as I'd like to get there, I don't think now is the right time. I, I think that we first need to focus on being the best at doing investment research. And there will be a time where we can uh, add the, 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 uh, the trading execution on the terminal. But right now, that's kind of a distraction for us. And I don't want to dilute our value proposition, which is actually performing financial investment research. Absolutely. That's that's, that's excellent. Uh, I, I, I agree. You have to stay focused. And, and of course, you know, the community understands uh, this. Yep. Um, and I, I love what you said earlier about both, you know, the employees of the company, the contributors, the community, having this, this space to follow their impulses and run experiments with the with a product and you, you don't see that in closed source uh, so at all it just doesn't happen and so that is the the huge superpower right there how do you how do you spend your time today um what is it what does it look like uh, yeah um usually in the mornings i have meetings uh now i move to the us so i usually need to catch up with the uh it's crazy because i went from um going to bed like you know at 3 4 4 a.m uh, and working uh, and w waking up at like 9 uh to now waking up like 
like at 7 a.m. and going to bed like, you know, at one or so because the schedule, I was living in Portugal and then I moved to the U.S. And so mornings I usually dedicate to spend time with talking with the people uh, from the team. So whether it is like product meetings, uh, marketing, uh, creating content, um, uh, design, you know, um, yeah, or usually just like overviewing day to day mostly. And then on the afternoon is more focused work. So if I need to write like, you know, a strategy document, if I, I've, I've been coding a lot for the, the our webinar last week, uh, we, we pushed the app out and the web, like the new website. And so I got to uh, pair program a lot with uh, one of our front end engineers, our main front end engineer, Jose. And so that was really fun for me. And that's what I, I used to do like in the afternoon and the, and the evenings. So that was a lot of fun because for me it was like a new technology. Uh, I'm kind of a Python, uh, uh, like, yeah, fan, and I've never really gone into the web stack. And going now, it was like, you know, it's, this is actually quite fun. You change things and you see that, oh, they reflect in real time. Then, you know, it can be sometimes a bit painful because the box, you know, needs to be a bit more aligned on the right or on the left, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And, and, and another superpower is that you can get to broadcast all of this and, and help other people learn as well and experience uh, the product because the code is open and you can do that. Yeah. You can do that with with closed source and uh yeah moving i guess from europe to to the us as a as a founder it it, it shifts your your time yeah. your sleeping schedule to something healthier i guess or more normal <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, absolutely. That's, uh, that's incredible the, the company the, the team size what is it today and are there any plans? uh sorry go ahead the team size today what is it and are there any plans for further hiring um we are around 20 people now and no plans for further hiring. I think we are in a in a good position. I don't think there's any role there right now that I think we need. We are in a good position to build what we are set to build for pretty much the rest of the year, really. Um, and yeah, no plan, no plan for hiring, really. That's great. Uh, some, some. You've already mentioned, like you've you've shared a lot of uh, you know golden nuggets here. Is there any additional advice that you could share to other founders, to people getting started today, or maybe a mistake to avoid to have been any uh any decent sound like yeah um I, I think a good a good advice to share is something that like this is a journey so you have to be comfortable with sometimes taking the wrong decisions but honestly from my experience like making wrong decisions fast is always better than holding out too long to make a decision um because also, the, the, a good thing about the open source is that you are able to iterate faster and that allows you to be, build a better product in a, in a faster period of time rather than, you know, just closing the, the, the scenes and working on it in one year and then you release and then you're like, you know, I, I expect this to be perfect. But like, if it doesn't ease in the end of the customers, like you don't really know, or users in this case, you don't really know what's, what's going to happen. Um, yeah, one thing that I also like learned is that at the start, like we didn't really have advisors uh, at OpenBB. And I thought that, you know, I could learn everything by just reading a lot of books because those books have like condensed information. Um, it's not really like that. When you start getting good advisors, you actually start learning that, you know, the, the amount of value that they bring like to one, like one hour session can be quite substantial. If you just go through it and you just have like a, a random chat to chat, the value is not so much. But if you actually have bullet points and you want to, to get pick their brains on, like it's super valuable. Um, and I'm just like, remember like, one of our like latest calls with like uh, Justin Hoffman from Elasticsearch, we talked about storytelling and 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 it's important its importance and how it is important not just for me to have a story associated with OpenBB, but every employee should have their own story on how they connect to like a human level to OpenBB, so that when they tell others, people can relate with that and they can support not just OpenBB because of the product that we have out there, but because of what we represent and now they can relate with the problem that we had when we started. And for me, like, that's something that like, you know, th this is so true. Like, th and when you start thinking about like the products that you support out there, it's not just because the product is nice. It's usually because, you know, you see how the company uh, uh, operates and you like the people behind it, or you like, like the founder, or you like someone and you've seen something that they shared online and you're like, you know, I like, I like all they do things. Um, yeah. That's amazing. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Loki, what is it like having, you know, as advisors and investors, like billionaires, has it kind of like blown your mind what it's like? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, honestly, I mean, it's crazy going from like 
listening, for instance, Naval in podcast to talking with, with him and having him like, you know, as an angel. For me, it was like, I, I did a tattoo the next day. I think I've never told that, that story before. I did a unicorn tattoo the day after Naval uh, uh, said that he would like, uh, uh, you know, join all round because I was so excited. I had that I had that call. It was like 3 a.m., I think, London time. And I was so excited. I even woke up my wife and she had worked the next day or something. And uh, um, yeah, because this is like, it's just surreal. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, you see that like these people and you put them on the pedestal. And then when you talk with them, they are actually just humble people. They talk with you. They don't talk with like from a pretentious place nor anything. And that's one of the things that I think that most of us think of when you think about like these people that are, you know, celebrities or you look up to, you always think about them like, you know, like untouchable, but they are like human beings and they are nice people. They actually care about the same things that you care. They just have like a much broader exposure and uh, uh, they are seen more more than you are. So they get more scrutinized sometimes or more like, you know, put uh, on, a, on a pedestal. But yeah, that's been like a fascinating journey, I would say. And speaking with you today, I think we'll be able to say the exact same thing in the future. If someone asks me. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> that was, uh, this, was, uh, this was awesome. Uh, this was awesome, Didi. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate the opportunity. And if for closing, you would like to maybe, you know, send people to try uh, OpenBB. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If anyone wants to try the terminal, I'm always on Twitter rambling about it. So try it. If you hate it, just let me know on Twitter why I'm like, Look, the best feedback we've, we've gotten is bad feedback because that actually means that we can, there's something that we can do to make to make it better. Like we get so many messages with like good feedback and that's really good for morale. And I, I share on our Slack channel all the time messages that I get from people that, you know, are either taking the software to their teachers to pitch it, to use it on the university or starting using it on the Oregon stuff. But actually the best messages are the ones that say, you know, look, the matplotlib solution just sucks because I can't, I can't over on the data point. So I don't really, I'm not sure what is the value. And you, you know, you look into it and you're like, you know, it sucks to hear this, but you know, this person is right. Like being able to over with your mouse on top of the data is actually so important and even like filtered through data. And so now we have interactive shots and interactive tables. And that came from, you know, not just one message, but a few like that, complaining about the, the, the static outputs. And that's the, the way we get better is actually by like, listening and not taking it from a defensive stance in a way you want to everything is you know everything can be feedback like uh, when someone texts you about open bb everything is feedback sometimes it's feedback just you know to say good things and you, you can't really take anything from that but the bad feedback usually there's always something that you can take of it 100 percent. i i second that it has helped us actually to pivot our own company in the right direction so if you know whoever has any negative feedback to say don't be shy it can make a difference please share it and of course the positive is we always love hearing it uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's an amazing way to to close this thank you so much uh, thank you so much Joanny.